we begin the discussion on the issue making headlines. South Korea's exports have been falling for nearly half a year as the country reels from the impact of the coronavirus outbreak. Geopolitical uncertainties have also delivered a blow to the heavily export-dependent economy. And with the economic fallout of the virus expected to last months, possibly years, it's clear that Korea's industries need to turn this pandemic crisis into an opportunity to build new engines of growth. So to discuss how Korean exports will be affected down the line and how businesses can reinvent themselves, we connect with Dr. Yang jun Sok, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. We also have joining us Dr. John A. Quelch, Dean of the University of Miami Herbert Business School. Well, my first question to you, Dr. Yang. South Korea's exports fell again during the first 20 days of May due, due to the impact of the coronavirus outbreak. And with the spread of COVID-19 and its economic fallout expected to rumble on for the foreseeable future, with no one really knowing when global demand will bounce back, which industries do you think will take the biggest hit? Okay, well, if you uh, look at the industries just a hit, the uh, first 20 days of May, it was the automobiles, that, which went down 58.6%, and petrochemicals, which went down by 68.6%. So it's not really clear whether that was due to the decline in volume or because of decline in prices, because the oil prices have been falling uh, for most of May, even though the price has recently recovered. Uh, semiconductors and shipping uh, with shipbuilding, they actually rose uh, during the first 20 days of May. And we may see some, uh, I wouldn't say recovery, but we had a very bad month in April where uh, exports fell by 24.3% and first 10 days in May where exports fell by 46.3%. But a uh, bit of a, I'm not sure if you could call it happy, but bit of a relief was that if you take 20 days of May, including those first 10 days, uh, exports fell by 20.3%. So it seems that at least for the uh, second 10 days of May, things have been improving a little bit. And if you look at countries, well, US and EU uh, went down quite a bit. That was probably because they were in a lockdown and a shutdown. But China only went down by uh, minus 1.7%. So uh, China's economy seems to be recovering and exports to China seems to be uh, uh, not getting as bad as it used to be. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, May numbers. Uh, it'll be bad, but hopefully it won't be bad as April. Well, Dr. Quelch, um Automobiles are one of Korea's key export items, but global demand has been falling for the last few months. What do you think the outlook is? I don't think the outlook is uh, very positive, at least in the short term for the next three or four months. Uh, number one, you have a situation where 40 million uh, or so people in the United States have become unemployed who were not unemployed uh, three months ago. Um, Hyundai and Kia uh, sell largely into the value-oriented consumer market. Uh, and many of those people who are affected by uh, unemployment are people who would normally be potential Hyundai and uh, Kia customers. So for both the auto sector and the auto component sector servicing and targeting the United States, I think the outlook is uh, not terribly positive for the next three to four months. Once the economy bounces back and a large number of those people become employed again, uh, then they'll have money in their pockets and confidence uh, to go out and buy a new car. But right now, uh, new car sales are off considerably and especially in the value segment. And Dr. Yang, um, adding to this uncertainty that we have, we have geopolitical uncertainty as well with the US-China trade war going on. How do you think this will, um, how do you think this will impact South Korean businesses and exports? Okay, well, obviously it will not be good news, but uh, on the other hand, I think perhaps uh, we're uh, blowing up the uh, U.S.-China trade war perhaps a bit too much. And the reason I'm saying that is, well, if you look at the Chinese GDP, uh, only about 20 to 25 percent are exports and only about 20 to 25 percent of those exports are going to the United States. Uh, so yes, it will be bad news, uh, but uh, I think the uh, reduction of global demand from the coronavirus will be a much bigger factor uh, because, well, uh, China 
uh, not only the exports to United States, but exports to Europe and even Asian countries will be affected by the coronavirus. Uh, so uh, that will be, at least in the short term, much bigger effect than the U.S.-China trade war. Uh, would you agree with that, Dr. Koch? What do you think, um, how do you think this U.S.-China trade war is going to affect Korean exports? Yeah, the, the China-U.S. trade war is, of course, just one aspect of an overall deterioration in the China-U.S. relationship. That's the most important bilateral relationship in the world on all fronts. Uh, and the Hong Kong situation uh, this year looks a little bit more tricky uh, than this time last year. We have had uh, protests in Hong Kong last year. This year, I think they're more serious. And the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, has come out today and really laid down the gauntlet in terms of uh, uh, the uh, reevaluation of all trade preferences with respect to uh, Hong Kong and also um, uh, threatening to put Hong Kong and Chinese officials uh, are under uh, watch in terms of uh, uh, their activities. So uh, I do believe that this year the situation is more serious than last year. But in the final analysis, uh, the world needs Hong Kong as the third financial center, the principal financial center in Asia. And for that same reason, Beijing needs Hong Kong as well. And so uh, while I'm a little bit more concerned than I was this time last year, uh, I am uh, at the same time recognizing the importance of Hong Kong to the global economy and to China. Um, would you agree with that, Dr. Yang? I mean, some South Korean businesses, they export items to Hong Kong, which then are sort of re-exported to uh, China. How will these kind of businesses be affected? Okay, well, uh, Hong Kong by itself is uh, Korea's fourth largest export destination. It takes about 6% of Korean exports. And uh, a lot of the uh, semiconductors especially go through uh, Hong Kong to get, uh, get to uh, China. So uh, any problem uh, with Hong Kong will definitely be bad news for uh, Korea. Uh, but it might be even more serious of a side on the payment side. Because uh, Hong Kong is a free uh, financial market, a lot of payments go through Hong Kong to get to Korea, especially, I, I believe, small and medium-sized enterprises, because, well, the procedures are just so easier. Instead of uh, payments going from directly from China to Korea, if it goes through Hong Kong, it makes a lot of process easier. But if Hong Kong gets into problems, if the preferential treatment is removed, uh, then a lot, we're going to see a lot of problems, I think, on the payment side, even more than the export side. Well, in the meantime, it looks like everything's up in the air. We don't know when recovery is going to come. But Dr. Quelch, in the meantime, it's clear that South Korean companies, they need to somehow restructure or reinvent themselves in the global market. And throughout the decades, South Korea has been focusing on uh, catching up, being a fast follower rather than a first mover of new products or services. What do you think have been the main limitations or barriers to innovation? Well, I, th I think you're actually being uh, a little bit uh, unfair with respect to the level of innovation in South Korea. Uh, certainly in terms of uh, uh, the in entire arena of digital technology, South Korea has been a world leader. And I recall uh, 20 years ago when Samsung uh, did a wonderful comeback and uh, leapt over analog American and European companies to uh, become uh, one of the foremost digital companies in the world and the leader in consumer electronics supplanting Sony. So it's that kind of spirit that we need to see uh, in South Korea. And uh, uh, in my experience, South Korean business people are extremely determined, extremely innovative, and I have every confidence that they will pivot as necessary to relaunch their companies and their product mixes uh, to address uh, the new normal. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, things are going to change in terms of what customers and end consumers are going to look for and value uh, post-COVID. And uh, I believe that uh, South Korean uh, companies uh, will be alert to that. Uh, I do think it's important that they understand what the end consumer, not just the intermediate uh, industrial buyer of their components, but the end consumer of the products 
uh, actually is now looking for in terms of uh, criteria for purchase. Uh, but I believe that uh, if you look at the example of Samsung, you have a great example there of uh, Korean uh, innovativeness and resilience, and I'm very confident about the prospects for the Korean uh, business sector. So in this uh, new normal, we need more digital services and maybe South Korean companies could help uh, shape that new normal. Well, Dr. Yang, South Korea is actually aiming to boost its so-called non-contact or digital services sector by boosting medical and uh, education technologies, for example. Do you see a big potential there? And uh, what kind of barriers do you think need to be addressed first? Okay, well, I know the government is trying to uh, push these so-called untacked industries. Uh, I have some doubts, industry by industry, whether uh, it's going to be successful. For example, education. We've been trying to digitize and uh, educate over the Internet for the last 10, 15 years, and it hasn't really caught on. I mean, for high school uh, have ones, private academies, some of their classes have been turned into Internet classes, but it doesn't seem to have catched on. Uh, students seem to prefer uh, teacher to student direct contact. And that's, I think, also reflected in current university education, where most of the classes are now online and students do not seem to be satisfied. Now, on medical side, I think there's a big potential there, uh, but uh, the regulations currently do not allow online uh, medical services. And until there's a regulatory reform and you have to convince the uh, Korean Medical Association that that should be allowed, uh, you're not going to get too much on the uh, medical online service side. And then one service I do want to mention, the uh, online app for food delivery, home delivery for food. Uh, that's going undergoing a big monopoly problem because about 90 to 95 percent of Korean's app delivery service is actually owned by one company. And so uh, Right now, the Korean Fair uh, Trade Association is looking at whether this monopoly will be uh, allowed or not. Uh, my own personal opinion is that if we allow this monopoly to go through, it's going to uh, be a, a barrier for a com a competition, and it's not going to be good for the uh, home delivery industry in Korea. Uh, but uh, the uh, FTC may allow it because they see home delivery apps as being just one small part of the whole uh, home delivery market. So for Korea to go forward in its digital platform sector and also uh, possibly um, turn those into exports as well, it needs to make, its, it needs to make a fair uh, playing ground level uh, playing field for all players. Well, just before we go, Dr. Yang, uh, South Korea's central bank, it cut its interest rate last week to a uh, record low of 0.5%. Do you think this will help stimulate the economy for now, or is it rather a bit pointless? Well, I, they cut the uh, interest rate by 0.25%, and the previous 0.25% really haven't done that much good. Uh, even the 0.5% uh, that Bank of Korea did just before this cut, uh, even that doesn't seem to have done that much good. Uh, I think uh, you need more fiscal policy rather than monetary policy currently. I think the uh, BOK was basically forced to make this cut because their latest revision for Korea's growth rate is minus 2% for 2020. And this is the first negative growth that we're going to have since uh, 1998, if this prediction comes true. And when they ma made such a, a terrible prediction, when they made such a... Uh, uh, pessimistic pr uh, projection, if they did not cut the rates, it would not look normal. So I think they were basically forced to uh, make the cut because of the, uh, the uh, pessimistic projections, and so they cut the rate as little as possible. So it was rather out of formality than necessity, maybe. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. But thank you for your incredible insights. Dr. Yang jun Sok, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea, and Dr. John A. Welch, Dean of the University of Miami Herbert Business School. Thank you very much for joining the program. Thank you. Thank you. This is also where we wrap up the show today. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow, Korea time. Until then, have a wonderful day or evening wherever you are. Goodbye.